All right, so today I wanted us to just go a little bit deeper. This is probably the last day we're going to talk circles and radians. Um, if I can get this to restart, check this out. So all eyes up here. And really we're waiting for this to restart, so wait till it shows the, um, the radius again. But what you'll notice if you start looking at the sheet that I, uh, well, that Grant or whoever got to it first, Grant. hand it out to you. Grant will know. Grant Carpenter. Somebody stole mine, apparently. Will know. Can somebody take mine off my desk? Wow, here we go. Here we go. So check this out. We start with a point, I draw my radius, and I make my circle. That length of the radius, when I take it and bend it around the circumference, that is one radian. So when we're talking about what radians are, and I think that some of you are still confused by this whole idea, the radian has no label. It's not feet or inches or anything like that because it's based off the circle size. So the one radian is the distance around the circumference that is equal to the radius. And that's why you can see on your paper, the radian angle measure is always equal to approximately 57 degrees. I was making sure that was recording. So there's that interactive thing. And then there's this interactive that shows that since I know my circle size and I can choose a point and start rolling my circle along, the distance that it travels in one rotation is two pi. But two pi times what? Two pi radius, right? You know that your circumference formula is two pi r. So that distance is relative to how big your circle is. So think about a bike. The bigger the tire, the more distance you travel on one rotation. Your skateboard, one rotation of that tire or that wheel, not gonna take you very far. But your bicycle is gonna take you a lot further because it's relative to the radius. Is that kind of making sense now? So I would underline or highlight arc length is equal to the radius. It's approximately 57.3 degrees to travel one radian. And you see it's a little bit more precisely given to you right down here. So if I talk about how many radii, radiuses, I can fit on the circle, well obviously we know it's two pi, so it's just over six. It's approximately 6.28. So half the circle's distance, we're talking about this distance here, is 3.14 radians. Questions on, like, are we kind of understanding what it means to have a radian now? It's distance traveled on the circumference. So, I wanted to go into a little bit of why. Why do we use radians? Why do we make things complicated? Because you guys obviously are, you know, in love with these radians. Probably not. So here is another um, example of a unit circle, very, very detailed. So what you can see is this is giving you your radian measure. How many radians or how much of a radian have you traveled? When you get up to one radian right here, that is just below 60 degrees. It's approximately 57. When we get all the way around 180 degrees, it'll be 3.14 or pi amount of radians. Um, you can see it gives you the um, pi values for your 30 degrees, your 45 degrees, your 60 degrees, and then those checkpoints all the way around. So it's got all those markings that your unit circle had previously. This just gives you a little bit more. And it shows you to go from degrees to radians or radians to degrees. We multiply by pi over 180 or by 180 over pi, depending on which direction we're trying to travel. So when you're in a unit circle, now here's the issue. Will every circle have a radius of one? No. no, because we have fixed units of measurement. If I could use whatever unit I want, I could make the radius one. I could say that radius counts as one. 
That's what this is referencing. If you make the radius one value, then this will be pi times those one values, or two pi, or however much pi you have, times that radius value. But if it's not one, that changes everything. So on our practice sheet, and we're going to do some of your practice together, on your practice sheet, we're going to talk about when we have circles with a different radius, how do we deal with that? So why do we use radians? What are some advantages of us doing this? Well, when you get up into calculus, which very soon will happen for you guys. Um, so I mentioned this earlier, but what's the label of a radian? Question or comment? Yeah, did you see I, I sourced it? So a lot of this stuff comes from um, other websites, but Wikipedia, like, and I was actually talking to Mrs. Uh, Goldring about this this morning because I knew you guys would ask about that. When you don't know something and you're looking for it, be cautious of Wikipedia. But I know what I'm looking for. I'm just trying to find somewhere to copy paste it from. So I got on Wikipedia and said, this is true. I know it is. I'm going to use it. And they have really cool interactive things on there sometimes, which is why I yeah. sourced And I only really wanted to put one website on there. I could track back what websites this originally came from or who wrote it, but then I'd have a lot of sources. So if I just source Wikipedia, then you can look at the Wikipedia sources. Um, can Wikipedia sources be the same as the radius? Can or can't? Can. Yeah, so that's, that's yeah, the good thing, good. right? Yeah. So once it's like fixed and locked, um, but yeah, I was just looking for where can I grab information that I know is true. So radians, and I want you guys to underline this because it's kind of a weird idea or highlight. Radians have a mathematical neutralness. Or sorry, natural. Well, it's a neutral or natural. It, you can kind of interchange them. They have no label. It's in reference to the shape or the item that you're talking about. Gentlemen, can I help with something? Ben, you look like a sack of potatoes. Like, <laughs> so you will sometimes see your angle measures given in radians because it's not degrees. It doesn't have. It just. It is just its value. So sometimes in calculus you'll see us use radians for those sorts of things. Um, a limit function. When we start to talk about a limit, has anyone seen these before? So this expression right over here is saying the limit of the function as it approaches this value. So a limit function, and this is where we use radians. Um, this is the limiting uh, or the limit of the function sine of h over h when h goes towards 0. So not when h is 0, but as it goes towards 0. So that's one place that we use uh, radians. At, and you'll see limit functions next year. Um, this is on your homework too. So this is very important. When we use it in physics, a lot of time when we talk physics, we're dealing with rotations. Things are moving. Things are spinning. A lot of things in this world spin and use circles. So I have, I have a question for you. If you're riding your bike and there's a puddle up ahead of you and it's unavoidable, Big old puddle. There's no way to go around it. You gotta ride through it. What are you gonna do? A vandal chip. Leah? That's good. Why? So that it doesn't uh, take up a chip. Yeah. When you roll through it, so it doesn't get as much like water going through the wheel, so that it won't hit you. You can't change the amount of water that but touches then, your like, wheels. It won't, it won't like go as fast, so then it won't spin up at you. Ooh. Why? What? So, so you said so the water spins up at you. What do you? What? Yeah. Centrifugal comes in centripetal, right? Or am I backwards? No, you're right. Centripetal pushes out. Centrifugal pushes in. I'm pretty sure centrifugal because it's focal, and centripetal is pushing out. Um, but yeah, so you've got that centripetal force happening on your tire. And the water is not attached to your tire. It's just clinging to it until it either dries or gets flung off it. So we slow down so that we don't have as much rotational velocity so that water will either cling to the tire 
or hopefully dry before it spits up at my face or on my back. Because who's ever ridden your bike and then you get home and you realize you've got like a mud streak up your back? Because yeah, your back tire ran through stuff and it threw it up at your back and you're like, oh, well now I have like dots all the way up my back. So that's where we start to use this. So um, when we talk about this, we will talk in radians per second. Uh, likewise, da -da 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 -da. and in case you want to know who to be mad at, I went ahead and gave you some history of the radian. So you can credit this to Roger Coates, who's a famous mathematician, uh, back in 1714. Off with this, well, I think he's already dead. So. It doesn't matter. Off with this head again. His corpse to cut off his head. So cut his head off. What Grant? Well, he was buried without his head. So, all this to be said, let's do some practice. Anyone want to pass out our next item? It's in the bin. Should just be the next stack of things. <laughs> Should say Hudson's practice with circles and yeah. Not dead, but left. Dead. Left. Yeah, Mr. Hudson. Left. 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 See, that goofs me up because I always think of folk and the uh, centripetal. Yeah, you can emphasize it a lot of ways. The uh, subtitles mode. I like when subtitles say like phone ringing or things like that. <laughs> Audience clapping. Extraneous noise. All right, so check this out. We start easy, we get a little harder. If you have two of the same, then you have two, one too many. I'll take that because I don't have a copy. Of the black you are a genius. So we want to find the measure of the minor arc, PR, when we know, thank you, ROQ is 160. So when we're talking degree measure, well, there's QR or QOR or ROQ. We know is 160. How do we figure out the arc measure? of PR when we're talking degrees. This is easy. Or we want the degree measure of this arc. How many degrees open up to make that arc? I think what you're saying makes sense, but I can't hear you. Ooh, we don't have to transfer to radians. So, your step one is right, but I started easy. We don't, we're not asking radians right now, we're just asking degrees. So, we're making sure that we know how to do step one before we have to add the second step in. So, if this is 160 degrees, what's its supplement? What is it, Seth? 20, 20. Because this arc right here would be 20 degrees, that angle is 20, the arc measure is 20 degrees. But you can't talk about the length of that arc as being 20 degrees, because degrees is not length. This is why Coates invented the idea of a radian, because it relates this length is relative to the size of a circle. I don't know why this is having issues today. So, what do you notice about this circle now in number two? What do you notice about this circle in number two? Is it a unit circle? Okay, we see an angle of 60 degrees. Ben? Wouldn't what? So, three is 30 degrees, but that three is not the angle. 
That three is the measure of the radius. So again, I ask, is this a unit circle? No. So will this arc be the same as what we talked about yesterday and what we have on our paper? Yes. No. The length, will it be longer or shorter? Longer. It's a bigger circle. So how do we find that arc length? Say it louder. Yeah. All you do is find, hey gentlemen, it's okay to help each other out, but it's like kind of creating distraction right now. All you have to do is find what would the arc measure be for a unit circle, and then multiply by what your radius actually is. Because if our radius is one, that value stays the same. If our radius is anything other than one, all we do is take that amount of radians and multiply by your radius, and then whatever unit your radius has, your arc measure will now have. Because when you multiply by something with a unit, you pick up that unit. So 60 degrees is how many radians in the unit circle? If this here, 90 degrees is pi over 2, check your unit circle. 60 degrees. Yeah, you can reference back to the other stuff I've given you. 60 degrees. How many pi is that? We know it's less than half a pi. Gentlemen, do I need to move you? No, you just keep saying the answer to keep repeating. So what do you think it is, Rager? No, I think it does make sense. What's your thought process? Hold on. Listen to Raider. I started with pi divided by 3 to express the way that it is the radius. And then I multiplied by 3, which cancels to 3. So 60 degrees, if this was a unit circle, would be pi divided by 3? Yes. 60 degrees is pi divided by 3. So then you multiplied by 3, because that's the radius. And those canceled out. Here's the other way you could do it. Multiplication. I'm going to give you a really easy shortcut here. Multiplication is commutative, right? I can do it in any order I want and not change things. What if I take my angle measure and multiply that by 3? That gives me, in the unit circle, it would actually be the radians equal to 180 degrees. How many radians are equal to 180 degrees? 5. So your answer here is pi, whether you find your radians and then multiply by 3, or multiply by 3 and then find your radians. Questions on this one? Emily. So I'll solve this another way, and then let me know if you still have a question, OK? All right, I need everyone's focus up here real quick. Either that or you're not talking. If you're not focused on what we're doing, you're at least not talking. If I wanted to find the circumference of this circle, we know it's either pi times diameter or 2 pi r. Those formulas you got to have memorized. Those are important ones. So if I do that here, my radius is 3. So really, I get 6 pi for the entire circumference, right? That's the whole distance around the circle. But this arc is not the whole circle. It's a portion of it. I can figure out what portion it is by saying it is 60 degrees out of 360 degrees, which really, when I cancel the zeros, 6 over 36, which really becomes 1 sixth. So this arc is 1 sixth of the circumference. So I can take that 1 sixth and multiply by my 6 pi. And now I get just pi. That's another way I can do that. It's a little bit longer. But if you forget how to deal with the radian work, that's how I can get there. Find what the real circumference would be. Find what portion of your circle you have. Derive it from that. Does that help? OK. On 
one? No, the, the one that you, you break up out of it, it's one plate. Oh, okay. I'll pull it down to the screen. That is equals pi over 3 because in the unit circle, if it was the unit circle, if we reference back to the notes from yesterday or, or the past two days, pi over or 60 degrees is pi over 3. Yeah, so um, I don't actually know if that was Alex or if that was somebody else. But so we reference back to what it would be if the radius was 1. Then because the radius is 3, yeah, I, get it. Yeah, I, I multiply by 3. Yeah, that's an equals. Sorry. Um, same thing here. Careful that you have a radius of two. Uh, we'll talk about the rest of these tomorrow. I'm just doing a few to get you get you a head start. So when we talk about areas of portions of circles, this should not be very difficult. So I'm going to do one of the easier ones with you, and then you guys will be able to do the other portions. How much of my circle do I have up here? A fourth of it, right? Because 90 degrees is a fourth of your circle. So we're going to have a fourth of the total area. So all we have to do here is compute that area is pi times radius squared, or pi times 26 squared. But then because I only have a fourth of my circle, I'll end up dividing that by four. So 26 squared times pi. Because look at your answer choices. They're not in pi terms. They're in decimal terms. So we know that we have to approximate pi and multiply it in. So I get 2,122.64 as the entire area of the circle. But I only have a fourth of it. So I end up with 530.9. So this, the area of the whole circle, that was 21,022 and 6,400. Hello? Got the page in my room. So same process for any other smaller area sections, any other sectors of your circle, same process, except you just have to figure out how much of the circle is it. Take the degrees you have over the total degrees. Um, that one you can probably do. Same with this one, except now you have three-fourths of the circle instead of one-fourth. What's the area? The area of a sector is da da da. So it, this is looking for the area, but now we're in pi terms. So don't use 3.14. Keep your pi as pi. Oh yeah. That good? No. Okay. No? So area formula is pi times radius squared. If you're going to tell me that you're not good, I'm going to wait for some eye contact so I know you're actually paying attention. Here, I'm going to keep my pi as pi. So your radius squared, this becomes 16 pi, but that's for the whole circle. So we then take my 16 pi and use that to derive what is the area of this section, or sector is more so what we call it. A slice of a circle, like a pizza slice, called a sector. So this then, I'd have to multiply, uh, it's hard to show multiplication here, by the degrees you have over the total degrees. And I would simplify that fraction because it can be way simpler. Uh, did I hear somebody ask about 12? Uh, I assume you can do 12 through 16. Uh, I plan on doing one of the bicycle ones. So do we want to jump to one of those since it's going to take a couple minutes? Yeah. You guys want to do uh, 15 or 16? 
They're both the same type of problem. You want to do 16? Yeah. Okay. All right. The angular velocity of an object is the angle per unit through which the object rotates about a rotation center. So what is the angular velocity in radians per second? So pay attention to the label that we want. Radians per second of a bicycle tire of diameter 80 centimeters. Diameter, pay attention. And it's traveling at 40 kilometers per hour. And we have a lot of different units going on here. So first thing I want to do is agree on a unit that I'm going to use. Do I want to use centimeters, meters, kilometers? What like, If I'm going to be talking per second, I need to make some of my units match before I start working. Obviously, my answer is going to be in radians per second. But the first thing I have to do is make my speed or my rate match the information that I know in units. So what, what units do we want to use? We could use centimeters, but I'm going to have a lot of centimeters yeah. here. Well, if I use kilometers, this is going to be tiny. So if I use meters, what does this convert to? 80 centimeters. What does centa mean? 100. So 80 centimeters, yeah. Is 0 0.80 or 80 hundredths. No, I what? No. <laughs> what does kilo mean? Thousand. thousand. So this is actually 40,000 meters. Do I want it per hour? No. I want it per second. How many seconds are in an hour? 3,600, because 60 seconds in a minute, 60 minutes in an hour. So this becomes 3,600 seconds. Remember, M is meters, MI is miles. That's why we use just M for meters. And if you do minutes, you got to use MIN. So now what do you think I do? I now have an agreement in my units. I have per second, which is what I'm looking for. Do I want these numbers as big as they are? Do your division. Make your numbers smaller. So 40,000 over 3,600. I have stacked zeros to begin with. So these zeros can disappear. These zeros can disappear. And I really get 400 over 36. We can reduce a lot of this just in our head because 436 both share a common factor of 4. So I can get 100 over 9. Yeah, it repeats forever, right? 11.1 .1 repeating. I'm going to try to scoot this a little bit. And that's meters per second. So I get 11.1 .1 repeating meters per second. So now I know the distance that I've traveled. But I don't care about distance. I care about how many radians I've traveled. How in the world do I figure out how many radians I've traveled? What's our conversion ratio? What did I, so I'm not disagreeing with anything you said. What did we start class by saying about a radian? What is a radian? A radian is equal to Leon? Um, I think the diameter of I mean, sorry, the radius of the object. So one radian is the arc length of a radius. That's why it's called a radian. It is the length of your radius laid out or wrapped around or however you want to say it around your circle so when i think about riding a bicycle the distance that i travel is really when i coil it back up or whatever gets wrapped around my circle 
or really you can think of riding a bike as unwrapping the circle in a way. So how could I convert my distance that I've traveled into radians? Well, if you just said that the radian is equal to your radius, my radius here, then must be 0 0.4 meters. So what would I need to do now? Figure out how many radians I traveled in a second. I know how many meters I've traveled in a second. I use degree measures. Can I figure out how many times my wheel has rotated? Can I do we know or can we derive how far I travel on one rotation? What would one rotation of the wheel actually be? What distance would you travel? The what? Two pi times whatever your radius is, right? So one rotation here So one rotation is going to equal my circumference which is 2 pi times my radius which when I do that 0.4 times 2 yeah one rotation it's a full rotation of your wheel so I'm not, I'm not dealing with radians right now. I'm just kind of collecting data. I'm figuring out what I know. So now one rotation would be 2.512 meters. How many radians is one rotation? How many radians is one rotation? Two pi, right? So this, the 2.512, Hello, I have a green pen. I would like to write. 2.512 equals 2 pi radians. Right? Because we distance around, this, it's, it's a little over 6. Right? What do we think? I'm trying to get you guys to derive this. What? What do I do with the pi over 180? Okay, but what do I use it with? What value do you want to multiply by pi over 180? Because the point of doing that is to get rid of degrees and convert it to pi. Or the other way around is get rid of pi and convert it to degrees. We want to know how many radians per second. try to figure out how to get to the answer for this is 8.84. Right, it's radians per second. Can you figure out what we do to get there? screen moved and some of these are now like in the wrong place.
radians equals in this circle pi radians equals 1.256 How do we get to the answer? What do we do? So what you guys kept saying, the, the pi over 180 or the 180 over pi, that's when we're converting between degrees and radians. I'm not converting between degrees and radians right now. I'm converting between length or distance and radians. So what I have is the distance that I've traveled per second, but I want to turn that into 11.1 repeating. Oh, point, oh, point one. Yeah, that's why the line is wrong. Okay. So, and we can approximate that it's just 11.1 and drop some of those, or we could say like 11.1111 and just put a few of them in there to be fairly accurate. So what we have right now, the knowledge that we have is that we have traveled 11.1 meters in one second. I want my answer to involve radians, which will normally use pi, or we can plug in pi as 3.14 or whatever. So I want radians per second That's two pi radians, right? Oh, no, so just two pi, one pi, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. So what we do here, we want to get rid of the meters. So we divide by what I know, meters. This is my pi radians, right? So that's essentially our conversion factor, and that gives me 8.84 radians per second. Because hmm? I don't know what you guys are going to do with your life, and if you go into any physics or calculus or engineering field, rotational velocity matters. Because if I'm building a machine, I need to know what kind of rotational velocity it has so I know what kind of parts to use. So if I make a part out of titanium, very strong, very light, versus if I make it out of steel, very strong, very heavy. So that's going to change your rotational velocity because then you get into um, like vector forces and the weight comes into it. How much inertia does it have as it spins? So th this is just kind of the basics of where that goes. Now, the other thing is I don't know what's going to be on the air test. So I'm trying very hard to prepare you guys for anything they might throw at you. So these standards that we've been covering the past few days, these are listed as minor standards. Knowing the unit circle and like converting between radians and degrees, that's a more important standard. But this sort of work that we're doing is a minor standard. So don't freak out if things are difficult. I get it that this is difficult. I just am trying to prepare you as best as possible. We will go over all of this worksheet tomorrow, so please have it done. I'm gonna come around and check for completion. I'm not gonna check your answer, but I'm gonna check for completion when you get in here, then we're gonna go over the whole thing. Okay? Um, oh, which one was it? Oh, that one's really easy. You guys will be mad about it. Hold up, I got papers to hand out really quick. I still got two minutes. The three letters that describe the magician's job, ESP. Or he wasn't a magician, he was a mind reader. Oh. <laughs> Lots of stuff to hand out. I've had this stuff for a couple days. I just keep forgetting to hand it out. So. Give me just a second to get this past that. Oh, yeah.
brackets. So they get less thick as they go. If your chapter 14 was not finished, I need you to finish it. You can go ahead and on a separate sheet correct whatever you have wrong. Yeah. I'm still working on your chapter 15s. I hope to get them back to you tomorrow, Jacob. Why you did not turn in your homeworks for 14 and 15, those grades are going in math very soon. So if you still have... Is that you? Yeah. Yeah. So is this. Is that like mine? Wait, how would you check mine in? Oh, they have to have a check of the Yeah.